So reading from Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 26. I'm sorry, I have no idea what it is in the Roman Church Bibles. Um, The birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. There we are. Good morning, everybody. It's, um, it's great to have the opportunity to share some thoughts about Mary this morning. And I'd just like to start by saying a really big thank you to you all for welcoming Joel and me and the children to this community so well. We've been here for a few months now, since June, and we just are so happy to be here. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be than here in Twerton with you. So thanks for welcoming us so well. So quite often when I come into church on a, on a Sunday morning, someone will say to me, how are you, Lella? How, how was your weekend? What have you done? And I'm always slightly filled with dread when somebody asks me because I can never actually remember what I've done yesterday, let alone last week. Um, so I haven't got a very good memory. But um, I do have one memory from when I was three years old, so the age Heidi is now. And it's, it's sort of stayed with me for all these years. And um, I, I'm the youngest of five children. And so I quite often had to fight a little bit for attention as I was growing up, as you might imagine. Um, but the way my mum would phrase it is that I was a bit of a drama queen. Um, so you can imagine my delight when at three years old, I was given the part of Mary in the Nativity at Fresh. And I thought this was wonderful. And I've, I've got um, a picture, actually. I found a picture. So there's me, Mary, age three. And um, my solo was learnt, my song, which I still, the little donkey one. You know that one? Yeah. And um, Joseph had been given his orders from me. And I, I had a great time. And... Perhaps it was from that moment, from those early days, where my kind of interest and intrigue in, in Mary began. And it's been so good, it's been a real privilege to, to ponder and meditate on, on Mary over the last couple of months since I've been kind of thinking about today. And, and Mary inspires me. She inspires me on many different levels. Because not only is she sort of the biggest model of mission, she carried Christ into the world, but her, her life story was one of faith, and it was one of courage, it was one of obedience, it was one of trust, and it was ultimately one of love. And the passage that Rachel read for us this morning, it sees Mary move on a journey And she moves from question to conviction, from petrified to peaceful, and from fear to faith. 
So Mary, she's young. She was probably 12 to 14 years old. She's from a working class family. She's engaged to the local carpenter. But more than engaged, she was basically married by law, but she was still a virgin. And she was at home in Nazareth. I can quite relate to her here. She was probably cleaning the house, sweeping the floor again, um, you know, doing her daily chores, when she had the most extraordinary visitor, one of God's holy angels, enters into her house and delivers a holy message. Verse 28 says, entering, he said to her, greetings, you highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. And the expression entering here would suggest the type of entry that a, a friend or a relative would make, just coming in through the door. And, and likewise, the, the word greetings is a kind of friendly and informal hello kind of introduction, hi. And so, that suggests that from the very start of the angel's encounter, he's trying to put Mary at ease. He's trying to create an atmosphere of tranquility. And so I find it really interesting then that her reaction is one that's described as being greatly troubled. So it's perhaps not the presence of the angel that's troubling her, which is what I'd kind of always thought when I'd read it but rather the words that are being spoken over her. Greetings, you highly favoured one. The Lord is with you. Mary knew her status in society, so why on earth was the angel addressing her in these grand and lofty terms, highly favoured? She was special. She was chosen. Why her? Why Mary? And you can almost imagine her asking these questions to herself, her head and her heart being overcome with, with doubt and uncertainty. What's so special about me? Why have I been chosen? Maybe he's come to the wrong house. I could understand him speaking these words over Sarah, the daughter of the high priest, but, but me? Why? Why? I, um, I used to be part of a group um, that met weekly for, for Bible study and for prayer. It was a group of women. And I was always really struck by the number of people that, that question themselves in relation to God and how he feels about them. And the number of people that would, in the similar way to how Mary probably would, ask questions like, why am I worthy to be a child of God? What's, what's so special about me? And I wonder how you react when it comes to God's truth spoken over you. But what follows is the angel's wonderful reassurance. The angel says to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. And then he goes on to explain the great plan that is ahead. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. That's quite a plan to be told. That's just, we can't get our head around, I can't get my head around it. What, what must she have felt when she was told these words? This young girl going about her ordinary business and then God steps in and changes the whole course of her life. How much did she really comprehend about the task that was given to her? What was it all going to mean? We've been listening in our house as we've been thinking a lot about Mary over the last few weeks. We've been listening to a song 
And um, I just wanted to, to share this song with you now. And it's just, um, it'd be great if you could really listen to the words because it's, it's just thinking about what Mary knew and what, how maybe she felt about this, this plan. So here we are. Mary, my betrothed, you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen and the sweetest smile. Don't be afraid. I'm the Lord's servant. Help us! Please! Lady, I believe your son is the promised king of his people. What is his name? His name is Jesus. Your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy Baptize me. has come to me? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to the blind man? Peter, Mary, where's my son? You know that your baby storm with his hand Didn't you know that your baby boy has walked where angels try And when you kiss your little baby You kiss the face of God Oh man My son. Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. Come out of him. Your baby boy is Lord of Jesus. all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb and the sleep? child you're holding is the great I quite a powerful video, isn't it? And in response to the plan comes Mary's question. How? How can this be? Since I'm a virgin, how is it even possible? This had never happened before. 
but she listened to Gabriel's response that this would be a divine conception. The natural way of doing things was going to be replaced by a supernatural way. This had never happened before and it will never happen again. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God, who cannot be contained by time or space, God would choose to be carried into this world as a baby by a vulnerable young woman. When I was pregnant with Heidi a few years ago, um, my first reaction to hearing, to hearing the news was, was not particularly one of joy. It was actually one of quite a lot of anxiety. And, um, yeah, I just felt overcome, really, with, with the whole prospect of it. And I happened to be in a, in a home group one night and I had my Bible with me and I wasn't actually listening to a word that was being said in the home group because I was rather distracted but I did open up my Bible to this passage and uh, never before really have have words of scripture spoken so profoundly and kind of instantly into my situation and into my heart as as it did that day because I I read the words that Mary says and my heart was transformed that in that moment I um, my anxiety was was replaced with peace and uh, from that moment on my whole mindset and my whole uh, yeah, my whole being was changed and that was the marker from reading these words and from being changed. And how much more would would Mary have felt than, than I did? She was at risk of social alienation, of losing her husband-to-be, of losing her family and actually even worse... But Mary moves from question to conviction, from petrified to peaceful, and from fear to faith. She chooses to accept God's plan and purpose for her life. She chooses to be faithful, and she chooses to trust in God no matter what happens and no matter of her circumstances. Verse 38 says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. She made an incredible choice, one of wholehearted self-surrender, one of unqualified submission to God's will. And we see countless examples of people in the Bible who chose to trust God and then were blessed for doing so. Abraham, trusting in God, was prepared to obey him and to sacrifice his son, the son that he'd been waiting so long for. And God spared his son, and he was blessed by being the father of many nations. Gideon, trusting in God, overcame fear of the enemy and was blessed by winning the battle. David, a young boy, full of prayer, full of faith, defeated Goliath and was blessed with kingship. Daniel, trusting in God, overcame the lion and was blessed by becoming a very prominent leader in the nation. All of these situations which seemed completely impossible but were possible with God. What does verse 37 say? Can someone read out verse 37 for me? Someone going to shout it out. Thank you. For nothing is impossible with God. I wonder if you're facing a battle today. Is there a giant 
like Goliath that's coming in between you and the blessing that God has for you? Is there a lion which is just overshadowing you and, and making you fearful? Perhaps you're facing something today where you need to make a choice. A choice to replace fear with faith and trust and obedience. Perhaps you feel unworthy of receiving God's love for you today. Verse 45, a little further on, says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Because when we choose to trust God, no matter what, we are blessed. And we are blessed to be a blessing to others. It'd be great if we could just um, take some time now. Um, maybe if the band could come back up. Joel. Um, and I just thought it would be great if we could take some time to... Um, to search our hearts, really, and to think about um, if there's anything in our life that we uh, that we need to, yeah, make a transaction, I suppose, to get rid of fear and replace it with faith. And um, the band will play, and uh, there'll be some people here at the front who would love to pray with you. So, if you would like to receive some prayer, maybe for healing today. As I was praying this morning as well, I, I had a sense that there may be somebody who's had um, words spoken over them from maybe from a long time ago, but those words have kind of clung and, uh, and you want to be free from that. And so, um, and God would love to do that for you. And so, yeah, just, um, just please come forward and we'd love to pray for you. I'm just going to pray, actually. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for the incredible example that Mary gave us of uh, being given a task by you and just obeying with uh, such humility. Just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come now and just rest upon us. Will you show us uh, any areas in our life which are, um, which are coming in the way of us reaching out for the blessing that you have for us? Thank you, Lord, that you are good and that you have wonderful plans for every person in this room. You want to bless us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.